Hi, I'm Valerie. And I'm Taylor. And welcome to Whimsy Gossip, where we talk all things fantasy and our favorite ways to escape reality. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is going to be fun. I just know already this episode is going to be really fun. <laughs> this is like, yeah, OG Taylor, like 2009, 2009. Yeah, yeah Taylor was, would be like, wearing her shirts that she used to like hand make to the movie theater. Um, I'm not kidding you. I had a shirt, my best friend, Savannah and I, we made these shirts and she was team Jacob and I was team Edward. She's really team Edward, but she just took one for the team. And um, she, we wrote on like puffy paint on these white shirts. Um, we wrote team Edward, team Jacob. We took red ribbon, like satin ribbon, like from Eclipse. And we put it around the sleeves and around the bottom of the shirt. And what else did we do? We did um, high whisk. Oh, we took red paint and we splattered it like blood was all over the shirt. Oh Um, my God. I wish there has to be a picture somewhere, but we used one of the quotes like Savannah has phenomenal handwriting. So she puffy painted freehanded one of like the quotes from the movie on the back of the book. By the way, guys, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about... (laughs) We're talking about <laughs> Twilight. If if you didn't know by what Taylor's rant of her shirt, we're talking about the Twilight Saga series. I'm getting way ahead um, of myself. You are. I'm holding um, Eclipse, <laughs> um, which uh, I think is both of our favorite, although yeah. Breaking Dawn was pretty freaking great too, yeah. um, which I also have over there. But um, This is a good throwback episode because I know a lot of it's people- It's a throwback. Yeah, a lot of people who are like in our age range, like 20s, you know, like they, everyone I think was part of the Twilight craze, like Uh mid to late 20s, everyone, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think everybody, I, yeah, mid to like maybe 20, age 25 to like 35, 35, like that 10 year gap or 10 year, whatever the hell, um, they experienced Twilight. And then of course, older and then more with older people as well and i'm not sure if the younger generation is reading twilight i mean please let us know are you I heard a there was like a generation? resurgence is there i heard there was a resurgence um mm. and it's funny because my niece uh we were watching the twilight movies with her um once and she was just kind of sitting there like i don't get it <laughs> and i'm like oh my god but so the lion fell in love with the lamb what a stupid lamb when a sick masochistic lion like Oh my not god, my memory banks, like, it's ridiculous. Also, it's just want to shout out my friend, Samantha, oh. Sam. She got me this beautiful mug, or little, not mug, I guess a cup, a beautiful whimsical cup um, to kind of support our little podcast here. So shout out to you. Thank you, Sam. It's so very you see whimsical. me drinking this. Oh, it, has a, it has gold detailing with floral detailing. And like butterflies, like just look, you can't see it. Um, if you're listening, yeah, uh, you can't see it. it's just very beautiful and magical and like vintage antique looking. It's literally how I would like to design my entire house. <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so let's get into this. I do have a few, a few notes here, of course. I'm, okay. I'm always here with the notes. Um, so I think first I want to just oh, wait, briefly... can we just talk? I tried my very best to dress as <laughs> Bella Swan as possible. Um, I don't describe have the what you're wearing. <laughs> okay. So I don't have the converse, but I figured I, I think she was in a brown jacket if I remember correctly, but I wore like a, a jacket thing. Like, you know, I have a green jacket on. I have just a black t-shirt some jeans. I purposely didn't really brush or style my hair today. Um, <laughs> very minimal jewelry, if any at all. She, yeah. <laughs> Are you like, calling Bella uh, bland? <laughs> I mean, she's a little bland. You know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yes, Taylor is Bella inspired, and I'm just bumming it today. Um, I just feel fun. like this is a homey episode. Like this is a very nostalgic episode. Yeah. So it's just like, let's just get cozy and dive into this conversation. You know what I mean? I'm so excited. You have no idea. 
So I wanted to start off the conversation by um, kind of giving each of us an opportunity to discuss the impact that Twilight made on both of us personally. Yeah. Um, the, and also the impact we feel it made on the world. Kind of like both of those things. So um, I don't know if you want to go first or what do you, how would you like to take that? Like kind of the question is um, the impact on th that Twilight made on you. Um, let's start with personally. So Twilight brought me one of my best friends, Savannah. Um, we were, I had stopped reading from Harry Potter and I was like, hmm, okay. At this point I was in high school as a freshman. Was I a freshman or as a sophomore? I think I was a sophomore in high school. I was a sophomore in high school. And my neighbor prior had told me a million times, like, you need to read these books. You need to read these books. And I was like, oh, we have very different tastes. I'm not reading your books because broad overview, we do have different tastes. So anyway, long story short, I picked up this book because I saw I was getting turned into a movie and I wanted to read it ahead of time. And I was like, oh, and I read it. And then I went to my next neighbor. I said, Elizabeth, this book, you have to read it. It's so good. And she's like, idiot that is the book i've been telling you to read and literally i think she hit me on the head with the book if i remember correctly fast forward i was so obsessed i was going to i had me and three of my like closest friends in high school like well at the time savannah and i weren't really close but we were going to our friend lexi's sweet 16 party which was all four of us going to um new york city in uh for her sweet 16 so the whole car ride to New York City, I sat there and explained the entire plot of Twilight to Savannah and like essentially forced her to read this book. <laughs> oh, wow. And then she fell in love with it, though. And she was like, wait, this is amazing. Her and I bonded over Twilight. We were super Twilight obsessed. Um, we would read the books. I used to get in trouble all the time in school for reading and not paying attention in like math class. And I was like, <laughs> I, <feel> I that. <laughs> do not care about math right now. I care about Edward and Bella. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, yeah. we used to go to the every movie premiere. So I'll never forget after the first movie, it wasn't like it hadn't reached that like chaotic popularity yet. And we were outside at, we actually went to like a midnight DVD release party for at Hot Topic at the mall. And of course. My, I know it was embarrassing. And I mean, I can't tell you how many like shirts I had and the dolls weird. Anyway. So um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, was it really was like a mania mania. Yeah. We went yeah. to like my first release party for anything was Twilight. It was the midnight release of the DVD and we were waiting for Hot Topic at midnight it was going to let us in the store and we could all buy a copy of the DVD. And I was so excited. And this girl, um, we were all like, I don't know what's it called. Like there was like Twilight trivia that Hot Topic was hosting. And I'll never forget this girl was like walking around and she thought she knew her stuff. Little did she know, Savannah and I were like psychotic fans, like psycho level. And um, they were like, what is the song that everyone was saying was going to be Bella's lullaby? And everyone was like guessing other things and tell me why I remember this, but I was like, oh my gosh, the song that everyone online was associating to be Bella's lullaby was River Flows in You by Yerma. And I remember- The fact every that you still remember that. Is embarrassing. Um, but everyone was looking <laughs> no, at me not. like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, oh, this is bad. So then fast forward, it was my mom, I think realized I was a psychopath at this point. And Savannah and I, she literally told us, she took us to multiple midnight like movie premieres waiting in line. And I think one time we might have brought in like our Edward Cullen cut our cardboard cutout with us. We were a little strange. I knew I had one <laughs> in my room. Oh my God. Well, did you, so how, if you were to guesstimate how oh long between reading or starting the series and the movie coming out, was it for you? Like, did you, did you already know the cast when you yes. were reading the book? Yes. I think. Okay. See it. Okay. Well, think about that. Maybe. I, I don't remember. Did you really picture was... Edward Cullen different? Like, did you picture the characters different? Yeah, like, I did. That would be Edward a vivid... different. Yes. Edward. So I then maybe remember. you didn't see Robert Pattinson. First, yeah. Cause I was I not like, you wouldn't have been him. able to unseen him. Yeah. I was not sold on Robert Pattinson. I was incredibly sold yeah. on Jake. Oh yeah. That was an easy sell. But yes, yeah, so we went to the movie yeah. career and we used to play this game. And this would be my end of my story, but just to explain how psychotic we were, 
we used to play this game while Savannah and I would sit there with our book. And mind you, here's my mom wondering why I'm getting C's in math class and like barely <laughs> passing in high school. And I'm opening up my books and or Savannah would open the book or I would open the book and we would read. We'd have to say, all right, you read one line. You got one line across and it has to be a quoted line. As you have a quoted line, what character said it? What's the context? Finish the line or and or the next quote and what chapter are we on? When I tell you I read those books probably at least 30 to 40 times the entire series through and through, this is why I almost did not like pass math in high school. Oh my gosh. My mom was sitting there going, you're almost failing math. You are almost failing math and you're telling me you can sit here and you can <laughs> quote the books like this. And I was like, hmm, and that, you know what you, that reminds me of like my, my husband where I'm just like, you can literally tell me every sports team players on not like from baseball to hockey, to football, you know, their stats, you know, history about all these players. But you can't like <laughs> tell yeah. me what you know. What, what the, are you passionate about? Green theorem is or whatever. You know, we choose what we want to focus on and I what can't we want to remember. Even tell you what the Green theorem is. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It's just one of those terms that just came to my head. Like, okay. anyway, no. I, I mean, I kind of think it's something to do with geometry. I hope. Um, but but yeah, it it, it's just it's crazy. I, yeah, I, it, it's just crazy that. Your mom, you know, you're failing math, but yet you have all this time and energy can, you can spend on this thing. But it's, it, I think that's kind of how humans operate. And yeah. we kind of make it backwards a lot of the time where we kind of force people into boxes. And if we really just let them thrive in the things that they want to thrive on, like, oh my gosh, when Z gossip, um, <laughs> then you like really, <laughs> you are really passionate about it. You know, you get really down in the weeds. Like that's why my husband yeah. knows all these sports stats and things is because he actually really enjoys athletics and sports you know so i, I think know, when you find what you're passionate about you like it's like a different level for you like i yeah. love books and i love animals and mm -hmm. you know i just feel like those things like we can be we actually bought our house like we got lucky enough to buy our house solely because i knew this guy's dog breed i'm not See? kidding you like literally See? i went over there and i was like oh Wow. And like, you know, I talked to him about the breed of his dog and he was just like, you know what kind of breed this is? It's a rare breed. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it just worked out great. And my husband's sitting there like, how the hell did you know what kind of dog <laughs> that is? And I was like, how did you not? Dogaholic. You're a dogaholic. Anyway, but long, as I've well. chatted enough. What is, what was your oh. experience with Twilight? Yeah. So, um, I was a couple grades young under you. So yeah. I got exposed to Twilight in about like 2007. So I was in seventh grade. Um, and before that, I wasn't really a reader. Um, but obviously also I was like, what, 12? <laughs> I was like 12 years old or 13 years old when I first, no, no actually, yeah, like 12. You were 12 when you were 11 Twilight? or 12. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I was oh, in seventh man. grade, um, okay. and, and I had already read the entire series before I moved to Maryland. I was in Nebraska because I'm a military brat, um, and yeah, before I moved to Maryland, all the books had already come out, and the movie as well. So yeah, no, I started the books probably when I was like 12, and um, I checked it out of the library at school because all of my friends were um, kind of, we were kind of the nerdy crew hey, in middle school. Okay. Um, I was in band and, um, we, we were the book, we were, you know, we liked books as well. And it was also the goth phase, the emo phase, the hot topic phase. So all of these things were all tied into this, this era. Right. And so middle school was very much like twilight, uh, emo, uh, uh, vampires. It was just all, you know, the flippy black hair, the pale yeah. skin, like everything. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Twilight really had a, a huge impact on my reading journey. It, it, I was absolutely obsessed. I was, I was, I, I read Breaking Dawn in two days, and the only reason it was two days was because halfway through I didn't want it to be over because I knew this was the last book, so I put it away, um, and then I, tried, I read the rest of it the next day. Um, 
but it was really amazing. And it, it took me out of, it took me out of where I was, you know, in my life at that time. And it introduced you to like friends and everything. Like when you came to Maryland. Um, no, because I think by that time it was kind of getting to be lame. Like I think after the movies came out, Mm. it kind of became more of a lame thing. Um, and I stopped really reading, um, after like my freshman year of high school. So I didn't really read a lot in high school. I was more distracted with boys and (laughs) other things. Um, but, but I had, and also I lost that core group of friends that were readers that mm-hmm. I had in, in Nebraska and middle school. But, um, but yeah, Twilight introduced me to a whole slew of books. I ended up becoming obsessed with the vampires, of course. And I and go, went on to read, um, Vampire Academy, Blue Bloods, the Marked series. Um, there's this other one that I really can't remember the name, but just, I would go to Target or the bookstore, like Borders became an amazing place for me. Um, yeah. So Twilight just really changed the whole game. And um, I was a super freaking nerd. Twi hard. So. You were a Twi nerd or a Twi hard. Yeah. And I was always <laughs> team Jacob or not team Jacob, team Edward um, from the get go. And yeah. Um, I, yeah, it, it's just, and now looking back, I'm like, wow, the writing's not really that great, but it will always just have like a special place yes. and like a nostalgic place in here. And I think like the movies when they came out, I remember going to the movies and like, I was freaking out. I went with my sister. Um, cause I think I got her to read the books too, my older sister, Christina. And, uh, I remember being so disappointed. I was like, no, this movie is horrible. I hated the casting for Robert Pattinson. I rioted. I was so upset. I thought that he looked nothing like what I pictured in my head. Um, even like Bella's truck. I know that they described it in the book, but I was like, I it wasn't the color that I wanted it to be. The only person I felt like they casted correctly at that on the in the first movie. Um, I felt Charlie, Charlie. you took the words out of my mouth. (laughs) He was the best casting. He was the best. He was perfect. Charlie was fire. And Emmett. Carlisle. Yeah. Carlisle grew on me. And Alice and Jasper. Yeah. But not the first movie. I honestly was like, "Mm, whatever to all of them for the first movie. I was just like, but Carlisle, I I mean, well, I called him Carlise. So (laughs) through the entire read. He was Carly's. Oh. So when they were, when I saw the movie, because at that time, like, I don't even know, like audiobooks maybe were some sort of thing, but I didn't have a Kindle. And I, so you couldn't really hear the pronunciations of these things. And it didn't have a pronunciation guide, like Throne of yeah. Glass does for the name. So I was like, oh, that's Carly's, you know, and I'm 12 reading this, like thinking that, you know, this is why I have unrealistic romance expectations is because of Twilight. Like it really is. Oh, 100%. See, I thought I was not too keen on the casting for Edward and Bella. I'm not going to lie. It could be worse. They've grown on me. Um, Jacob, I thought, uh, was casted really well. I loved Taylor Lautner. I had the biggest crush on him. It almost made me turn Team Jacob just no. because of how hot he was. The he thing was... is, you, you're Team <sighs> Edward because Bella can have Edward. You want Jacob. I would try to tell people that all the time. And I'm like, look, you want to be But Edward. I want Edward, too. And I will say, like, I what I thought Robert Pattinson was so unattractive for so long until I watched the movie tenant mm. and uh, he had, that he was jawline. older. He had his beard scruffed yeah. in and his like blonder hair. And I was just like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> he had like Tanner skin. Like, he wasn't looking like he was dying. You know, yeah. I was like, what? He's actually a really good actor. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so sad for this guy. <laughs> what was uh, the movie Remember Me? That was a sad movie with him. That was. I didn't. I haven't seen it yet. That'll make you cry. So maybe don't watch it. Um. Mm. Yeah, it's about 9/11. <clears throat> oh, no. oh, that'll get me right in the in the heartstrings too. Yeah, talk about really good, our though. generation. But yeah. yeah, but yeah. So he. See, I thought they casted Carlisle. Well, I wasn't a huge fan of the Esme casting um oh, i was a fan of carlo later just not i'm talking about the first yeah. movie I, was, I didn't 
but I liked Carlisle. I did like Alice. I did like Jasper. Um, Ashley Green um, was the best. Wait, do you watch her podcast? Have you seen her Twilight podcast? No. The tw- it's who? called The Twilight Effect. Ashley Green, who played Alice. So her best oh. friend is a huge Twilight nerd. Who would have thought? What? Yeah. I didn't know that she had a podcast. Oh my gosh. Like, currently Wait. talking about this? What? They're currently like going through like yes. talking Twilight. Yeah. Things? Oh yeah. And they bring on the cast members and stuff and they what? talk about like different scenes. And then, um, so Ashley Green was telling oh. me that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She, we're well, not telling me, sorry. Yeah, she's telling me personally. No, she's on the podcast. <laughs> she was saying, Everybody's telling you things personally. I know. <laughs> I'm getting them confused. Anyway. So she was saying on the podcast, um, that what's his name? The guy who plays Emmett, um, Kellen Lutz had, already gotten the role as Emmett and then they were like auditioning her for Ashley agreeing to be Alice and they were like have you ever played baseball before and she's like absolutely yeah totally she never did and um she (laughs) the first scene they ever filmed for Twilight was the baseball scene that was the first ever scene filmed isn't that that's crazy? crazy, isn't it? And like, it, you that know, is there crazy, she is. Like, that, that scene was pretty fun. I will say like, I well, like Alice that when she like kicks her leg up in the air to like throw the ball. And like, that was like her own little Alice touch that she decided to add in there. And I was like, yes, good on you, girl. Like that was so iconically Alice that like stuck with everyone through the series. Like that was just an iconic moment. But it's just so cringe though. I'm not going to lie. Like the first, I, and then they did a comedy movie to make fun of, oh, yeah. um, I think it's called Vampire Suck or yes, something. To make fun of Twilight. Oh my God. Yes. And I was nerding out like, oh, that's right. The book is elite and the movie sucks. Yes. Let's make fun of it. I was definitely one of those people like, oh, I was and not. honestly, rightfully so. I was one of those people who I'm like, I am obsessed with the books and I read these books before these movies even came out or in existence so i feel like i have a leg to stand on and this is bullshit i (laughs) I was like this is bullshit i was very much like i was all about the movies because i was just like i was part of the twilight effect i really want you have to watch the podcast because the end of every episode i need to call in one day i need to be one of them but they have (laughs) she has a cast member it's her and whatever cast member is on the tv show on the podcast with her that day and it's her best friend too is on there as well and yeah. um, they go and they play Twilight trivia. So, you definitely need to go on there. Yeah, well, because, I I just didn't want I re, I went to go see the movie. I just didn't want to see it because it sucked, and well, I really do they, think it was they, it's cringe. The book too, like it's not just the movie they do trivia on. So it's funny how but was Twilight the first movie not cringe? I mean, yeah, but it's like it's one of those <laughs> things where I swear because it's just one of those cult classics. It is a cult classic. classic it is a cult cult classic now, yes. Like you can't yes. say like Twilight was such a phenomenon that you can't say now that I don't know. It's just you will remember it. Like I can so going back to this the trivia they do, they were asking like these questions and they were like, um, what was the one question? And it was oh, it was like when does Bella first see Edward and New Moon, like as the vision? like the vision of him, when does she first see Edward? And mm. they were like, um, the two, like it was, Kel- maybe it was Kellen Lutz and, or was it Jackson Rathbone? I can't remember one of them. And um, Ashley Green, the people who were in the movie were like, oh, I don't know. Was it when she jumped off the cliff in the water? Was it this, was it that? And the two fans are over here looking like, no, it's when what? she was on the motorcycle. And I'm yeah, over it was here, when she was on the bike. Yeah, when I'm over here answering all these questions. And it's, like, funny to think that being such super fans, you know more than the actors. And even the actors are like, yeah, I'm going to go and ask my fan teammate. Like, because they, they get a, it's an actor and a fan and an actor and a fan. And they play trivia at the end on, like, these really hard Twilight questions. I want to watch this right now. Like, we should just stop this it's and go so watch cute. it. It's so cute. I love it. I want to watch this. Yes. It's for the Twilight okay. Effect. Well, to plug it in. You that's, welcome, Ashley Green. But if, see, I knew the answer to that question. So maybe I maybe I know more than I You definitely think. It's just, do. It's been... It's just, Taylor, it's it's kind of weird because it's just been so long. It's been so long since I've read that book or that whole, read those books. But it's been more recent that I've seen the movies. Um, so it's just 
I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to remember a lot of the things I feel like that you happened. Just remember, it. like, once you hear it, it's gonna like it was such an important part of your life that I feel like it just jogs your it memory. It really back. was. Like, yeah. I was very, 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 very obsessed with Twilight. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so let's, <laughs> let's get into some of these questions. <laughs> um, what what was your favorite book in the series? Right. Yeah, why? Um, because I hated New Moon because Edward wasn't involved. And I just 10 out of 10 did not like it. I think it was because you got to see more of Edward and Bella's like love story, love story kind of forming. They got engaged. It was cute. The first one was like, oh, they're in love. And then he leaves her and you're just like, well, what's the point of me reading this book at this point? And then Breaking Dawn was just the roller coaster of emotions of her dying and the baby and all that kind of stuff. And... I don't know. And then, so I also like Eclipse, like the battle scene with Riley. Was mm. that Eclipse? I don't know. See, I don't uh, remember I what happened Eclipse. in Eclipse. I think it was Eclipse, and I think that's the, ep- not the episode, but I think that's the book. What happened in this book? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is the book. That there was, um, it was when Victoria died. They killed Victoria in that battle. So they had a bunch of like new vampires turned, and she had her right hand man named Riley, if I remember correctly, went and turned a bunch of new vampires, and they were all to attack Victoria, like the Cullens for Victoria, because they were going to go and like revolt against them. And I remember yeah. reading a whole little segment extra book about a little girl who was like one of the vampires, the ones that the Cullens captured at the very like end of the battle. And they were going to try to save her. But I believe Jane and the rest of the Volturi come and say, nah, she can't be saved. Brie was her name. See, these are the things you remember. Yeah. Yeah. And, Riley, yeah, and I'm reading the synopsis. I think you're correct. Yeah. And so Riley was Seattle the guy. Is ravaged by a string of mysterious yes. killings and a malicious vampire continues her quest for revenge. Victoria. Revenge because of James. Victoria because they killed James. James. Yeah. Yes. Right. In Twilight. So. Yes. 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 That scene was my favorite because all the wolves, like wolves were hiding. And then all of a sudden they come out. And then Victoria won when she crushed Sam's ribs screw was it sam i think she's like when she squeezed his ribs or was it seth it was sam or seth and she like squeezed the oh, ribs loved them. really tight and like hurt him and i was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna riot um and yeah that was just really good like a good moment and then when okay did you hear what should that? we just reread this entire series i think we should <laughs> um <laughs> but wait can we talk about speaking of victoria where, how did you feel about the recasting of Victoria to Bryce Dallas Howard in the second book? In the set, yeah, second book or second movie. Sorry, because um, she changed characters. I, I typically hate recastings on just principle and, reno- and note. Yeah. Like it really just like throws everything off. Um, but I don't remember how I feel, how I felt in the moment. I think probably I was like not happy with it because I genuinely just as a rule don't like recastings but how'd you feel I remember in the beginning like I was very angry because I was like why would you like kind of the same as you I want continuity I want it to all be the same it's silly but looking back hindsight Bryce Dallas Howard I just remember I remember literally like right now is the scene from Eclipse when she's like don't listen to him Riley don't listen to him I love you I love you and then he's like yeah yeah, and her eyes just looked so convincing. And then all of a sudden, he's dying, and he's, like, screaming, like, Victoria, as the wolf has him, like, right here on his shoulder, like, dragging him away. And she's, like, he's, like, Victoria, Victoria. But she sees her opportunity to kill Bella. And mm. she just looks, looks to Riley and is, like, see ya, and goes to get Bella. And, like, he dies and gets ripped apart and killed. And it's just, like, I remember in that moment, I was, like, oh, she's she's the good one like she's like if i think back to that scene i'm like okay she did a very good job of portraying the emotion on her face yeah yeah and i don't think i'll ever watch twilight again just kidding so i'll never notice the difference um i'm just kidding i'll watch twilight i i i will watch twilight i think i want to have a twilight marathon with you actually yes. now like i really want to have a twilight marathon oh man with you. Um, i'm embarrassing the favorite book question for me is really difficult because I feel like 
the movies and the books kind of blend together sometimes mm-hmm. with what my favorite movie is and what my favorite book is. Um, I think I might change my answer though from from what I said in the beginning. I really do think Breaking Dawn is my favorite. I literally have a tear on um, one of the pages still to this day, a tear. I cried on it and I was so upset that I did that because I was like, oh, I ruined my book. But I think I cried on the page where, um, oh gosh, it was, I think it was where they thought they were going to like die or something. Oh, where Bella was going to uh, die giving birth? Or is it the end with the fight with the Volturi? It was the it was the end. Okay. It was closer to the end, and I thought I was like, no, with their daughter, and they're all gonna be killed. And I don't know. I, I there's a tear, a little tear. I don't know why. There's such a. It's so weird. I can't remember like the details of, of clips, but I remember sitting in my bed, vividly sitting in my bed. You know, twelve years old in Nebraska, reading Breaking Dawn with it and crying on my book like it that's like a core memory i don't understand it like that was the first who, time like, a book comment, evoked feelings for you that's why like comment below what are your core book reading memories from reading twilight so i'd have to say i i really think breaking dawn is my favorite book um in the whole series i thought it was amazing i i was so impressed um to piggyback off of that which of the five movies did you enjoy the most I know my answer immediately. Breaking Dawn Part One. So I, that's a good one. I, Breaking Dawn Part One. wedding was set yeah, the bar the, really it, we, had the, we had the wedding. We had the honeymoon. Yeah. We had the pregnancy. And then at we the had very the end, whole transformation at the end. It open to vampires. I freaking died. Uh, Breaking Dawn Part One is a movie that I will rewatch. Like that is one. If I could pick any of the movies that I had to rewatch for the rest of my life, it would be Breaking Dawn Part One. I want to say the first Twilight, just because of the cult classic fact of it. It's Twilight. Like it is Twilight. Like you know what I mean. But I'm not gonna lie. For some reason, I want to say Breaking Dawn Part Two. Say it. Just say it. Say it out loud. Say it. (laughs) <laughs> what am I? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is so embarrassing that we haven't read these books or seen these movies in years. And it's just like, <laughs> where's my friends? I need Savannah with me right now because Savannah yeah. is just as. The sparkle for me, oh. though, like, that, honestly. Back in the day, I thought that was so great. I was like, oh, my gosh. But Stephanie like- Meyer, what were you doing with that? Because now I'm watching Vampire Diaries, mm-hmm. and it's, like, so much more badass. Like, they will fry in the sun, you know? Like, they did the whole ring thing to get around it. Okay, rolls my eyes. But it's better than sparkling. Like in the sun. Though, okay, so someone had a debate, and they were like, do you think – and this is my question. I heard, I saw this online and I was like, oh, I know my answer. In a battle, who would win? The Cullens or like the Vampire Diaries vampires? Like if you had like the Klaus and like Elijah yeah. and like Damon and Stefan and you know. Does Bella get to be involved in this battle with her shields? No, I would just say like the core Cullen family. Then they're losing. Yeah, they're dead. No, they're not. Yes, they are. So as we see in Vampire Diaries, you can like take apart, like I can rip Damon's arm off if I want to. And like I can easily kill them by like ripping their head off. The Cullens, they how do you kill a vampire? They are literally like made of stone. Like they're like marble. Like remember when Edward's face is like getting cracked from being like like, you know, they're pressing on it. And the only way to, like, kill a vampire is to shatter the pieces, like, shatter them like stone, and then burn them. Anyway, so, Damon, if you tried to punch Edward Cullen in the face, um, Damon would break his hand because Damon would literally be punching marble because Edward Cullen is, like, stone. And every Cullen member is, like, stone. So I guess I didn't remember that they were like stone. Um, 
So you think basically the way that they're both written, the Vampire Diaries characters are written weaker? I think the only reason why my initial inkling was that they win is because they're way more ruthless than the Cullens. The Cullens are very peacekeeping people. And they like, I feel like they're just, they don't have that ruthlessness inside of them that Damon and Stefan and Klaus and all of them have shown us. I mean, I'm only on season three, but they've shown us that like ability to just be cutthroat ruthless. But I think like in a fight, like also the Cullens have like powers. Like Alice can see the future. Emmett has like super strength, you know, like. You're right. You're right. can read minds. What can Jasper do again? I, I just think that they would... Um, What's Jasper's power? Oh, he calms you. He controls your emotions. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I love Jasper and Alice. They're so what cute. What is Rosalie? I just don't powers? even think it would come to a fight. I think that they would find a way to talk them out of it, honestly. That's true. Damon would choose... <laughs> the Collins life. are just... The Collins are so fucking political. Yeah, but Damon would also schmooze his way to get what he wants. Yeah. Anyway. But I'm, I'm just... I just I just can't see the Collins being vicious. Yeah. Even in Breaking Dawn, they were all just like trying so hard to avoid a fight. A fight. Yeah. And the only reason that they were able to do it was because of Rose, Ro- what Rosalie, Rosalie or whatever, their daughter. Renesme? She was able to, or sorry, not Rosalie, Renesme. Thank you. <laughs> was able to do the reverse touching, which was interesting. Yeah. So I think why I really also hate, so, okay, well, I didn't even say that I hated Breaking Dawn Part 2. Um, what, why Breaking Dawn Part 2, to me, does not live up to Breaking Dawn Part 1 is because of Renesme. I really hated the CGI. I thought it looked terrible, and she looked really creepy, and I don't understand. It didn't hit the way they wanted it to at all. I remember being in the theater, and you remember how Stephanie Meyer teased that the ending was going to be a little different in the movie. And I remember my friend Savannah and I, Savannah was in Georgia for the summer, but she came home just so we could watch this movie together and see it in theaters. And I remember we're sitting in the theater and then all of a sudden we were both talking at this point like, oh yeah, Stephanie Meyer said the ending was going to be different. It was going to be different. I wonder how they're going to change it. Like blah, blah, blah. And they start the fight and Carlisle goes first and they come back with Carlisle's head and he died because they took off his head. And do you remember? Like, that is not yes. how it happened in the book. And you're seeing all the killing was going. I was shocked. And I just remember, like, I think Savannah and I, I literally kid you not, I think I was <laughs> physically screaming in the theater. No. And so was she like, no. And, like, crying. And her and I were like, what are you doing? And then when it all just comes back, like, boop, it was just Alice's vision of what's going to happen. And then they're like, yeah. I remember. I was pissed. Pissed? I don't know what I thought. I think I just sat back and I was like. I was pissed. I was like, well, that's. I literally think I remember having this thought. Well, that was stupid. Probably. (laughs) That's what I was like. Well, that was dumb. You you did all of that for nothing. It was just a stupid vision. Yeah, literally. But it was like, I think it threw everyone off. Yeah. Which was, okay. I will give it the credit that like... So Twilight is your favorite yeah, book, movie. Yeah. Eclipse is your favorite yes. book. Okay. Who is your favorite character? Alice. Yeah. No questions asked. It's I feel always going to be Alice. I love Alice. She's so cute. And she's just a good person. Yeah. Yeah. She's a really good person. I would say she's probably... Probably my favorite as well, or I don't know. I didn't hate Bella in the books. I hate her in the movies. I can't like disassociate them now. Now that I've seen all the movies, I can't think of her the way that I did before. You know? Um, Who was the other alternate person that they were talking about they were going to cast as Bella? It was someone else. Like, Christmas Stewart almost didn't get it. It was, um, I can't remember my name. I can't remember who it was. I think Edward was my favorite character. Yep. Edward. I think Edward was my favorite. I was obsessed with him. I was obsessed with Edward. I wanted to marry him forever. Yeah, I think we all And always. Until I saw Robert Pattinson, then I was like, no, no, I'm good. Oh, thank you, Whiskey. He's bringing me his uh, fish (laughs) toy. Want your toy? Aw. Go get it. Okay. 
So why do you think the series um, blew up so much in the way that it did? I think because it was like the first book to movie adaptation that we really, that I think one, the book blew up just because it was like this like forbidden love. It was high school. It was vampires, you know, like it was just a, for high schoolers, it was a good little it was a really nice young adult. Yeah, it was a really, for the time and everything, it was a really good, like, YA novel. And I think it blew up for that reason. Um, and also, like, there's just some good quotes. Like, to the lion fell in love with the lamb. Like, come on, that's precious. Um, stuff yeah. like that. So I think that was cute. Uh, and I think that's probably why right. it blew up. And then they casted, like, people like Taylor Lautner. And you're like, Okay. And I think because yeah, I like I'm going to show up just for him. Yeah. The first movie I remember and reading the books, I remember people like making fun of my friend Savannah and I for reading books, like reading these books before the movie came out. And like they used to mock us and like laugh at us in school. And I was yeah, like, that's terrible. OK. And then fast forward two years and the movie is out and then New Moon is out. And all these like girls, like the popular girls in my school were now all like oh my God, I'm team Edward. I'm team Jacob. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you're kidding. Excuse me. I've been here for a while. <laughs> also tell me why do I remember this is going to sound weird, but I feel like one of the movies came out on November 21st or November 20th. That is definitely possible because every time I see one of those dates, and the 18th, I'm pretty sure one of the, the movies came out because I used to know the dates that every movie came out because it was like a weird yeah. thing of mine. But every year, so it's like November 20th or November 21st, I'm like, oh, happy birthday, New Moon. Oh, we need to look that up definitely afterwards. I don't know. I just want to know. It's like fact check each other. We're weird. Like, I feel like this was the first book that like was a phenomenon of a book. So I don't know. Why do you think it blew up? Um, I'm looking up right now. When did Twilight premiere? Twilight premiered November 21st, 2008. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, look up when New Moon came out. <laughs> November 20th, 2009. Yeah, no, wait, November 20th? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know Eclipse or Breaking Dawn or Breaking Dawn Part 2, but unless one of them is the 18th of something. Um, That's so weird. Breaking Dawn Part 1, November 18th, 2011. <laughs> <laughs> no, Eclipse was in July for some reason. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. And then Breaking Dawn Part 2, November 16th. So they just wanted a July movie. I guess. And that was really weird. Everything else came out in November and then July for some reason. Okay. Very That's close. very strange. July yeah. 3rd. Or sorry, not July, June. June okay. 30th, 2010. But I just think, so I think it blew up um, for a variety of reasons. I think one, there was this huge um, young adult following. Um, and I think that we were, we had MySpace and the internet mm -hmm. in a way that we never had before as well. Um and uh, I think it was that time where um, emo and uh, rock alternative music was a big thing. Oh, Paramore. And so we had MTV. We had, we had Paramore. We had 30 Seconds to Mars. Um, we had all this, you know, um, music videos of grungy, you know, emo hair, dark. Um, everybody was emotional and like... So it was already, the energy was already there. Yeah. Like, I feel like the groundwork was already there. So then when Twilight came out on the scene, it was, it fell right into that hot topic era where like, that was the cool thing to do was to, to go to hot topic and get your, your band shirts or your Twilight shirts. And they had Harry Potter, you know, they had all the nerdums at hot topic. Um, so I think that it just was the perfect time for that book series to come out and like the way that it did and, and gain popularity like that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's why it blew up so much. And, um, and then by the time the movies came out, even though it was a little bit, uh, later, 
you already had all of those old fans who read the book when I think it came out when like 2005, maybe I'm guessing. I don't know why that comes into my head. You already had those and now they're growing up. Those kids are growing up and you, you got a huge swath of generation and then and then you even pulled in the older people who are trying to be cool, right? And want to watch Twilight. You had those, you had those moms and all them like, oh my God, Edward, like fawning over Edward Cullen, right? Like, so yeah, I just think it was a good, a good time for it to come out. And it definitely marked a generation. Twilight marked an, an entire generation, much like, much like Harry Potter did as well. Like it really just, these were these giant phenomenons and it was my first book to movie adaptation um because i didn't read harry potter so um that was cool that was really cool so so just to wrap this up i want to do something a little fun um i want to talk a little bit about some what ifs so what do we think if it were to, if a continuation were to be written today, what would we like to see? Um, and you know, do we think that the series that Stephanie Meyer will ever pick it back up? So what would you like to, where would you like to see, where would you like to see Bella and Edward? I think Stephanie Meyer wrote another book, didn't she? She wrote Midnight Sun, which is Twilight from Edward's perspective, but I don't know. No, I think she's writing another book. Like, I think she just released recently that she's writing another continuation in the Twilight series. And everyone's saying, like, Stephanie, that is so great. All of us that were in the YA group that we, you know, that was awesome for back in the day. But now we read spicy books, Stephanie. All of your fans that love Twilight read spicy books. So give us Twilight, but make it spicy. Oh, this is recent. Yeah. February 2023. Stephanie Meyer has announced that two new Twilight books will be released. Yeah. But I guess we don't know um, the context. We don't know the context. So they could be just be more Edward's perspective or they could be future. So, okay. So now we know there's two more books. Okay. But still, what would you like those books to do? What would you like those books to like? What would you, what do you want to see? I want to see a whole story about Charlie. Just kidding. I mean, maybe Charlie. 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 You know what? Change my favorite character. Charlie's the my favorite character. <laughs> I think Charlie as I a grandfather him. to a vampire granddaughter <laughs> dating a werewolf would be a really great story <laughs> that I would love to see. How is that even gonna work? How like you know what? That's funny too. It's like that was the birth of the mating bond. <laughs> Right. If we're imprinting. <laughs> well, because it's a mating bond. Well, the cool thing is Jacob gets to live forever because Renesme, when she stops aging, Jacob stays the same age too forever as so they can be together forever. Wait, what? You don't remember what? that? No. So like Jacob's not gonna age because Renesme, when she stops aging, like Jacob will stop aging too with her because that's who he imprinted Why? on. I'm like 90% what? sure that's how it goes. Comment below. I'm confused. Like, so because Renesmee is going to stop aging when she like reaches like maturity. Right. And yes. so because he imprinted on her. And like right now, I'm pretty sure as like for the werewolves, they like stop aging once they meet the person they're imprinted on until like they kind of reach that maturity level, like where they're the same age. So, like, oh, when he. I really am going to look this up afterwards. Comment below. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's. No, I have no. I honestly have well, no. I'm zero talking about clue. the people below. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Oh. Because Renan is, Ren is going to stop aging, that he's going to also stop aging. And that's how they're going to, like, they're going to live forever. But they can't have kids. I mean, maybe because so she's what do like you want, half So, human, what do you want to see? So, do you want to. Do you want to see their love story play I out mean, then? I mean. I'll be honest. I don't know how I feel about their love story only because like he's like 18, 20 years old and she's like a baby. <laughs> so weird. And like she's growing it's up so with weird. that. It's like, oh, Uncle Jacob, like a family friend. And then out of nowhere, you're going to gonna kiss your family friend. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. They That story truly creeps me out. So I don't know if I want to see that yeah. story, if I'm being completely honest. 
Um, but maybe it won't creep you out if you see it play out the way it's supposed to. And so, I don't know. I think the movie made me feel a little bit better because he kind of described it as like, I mean, I know Bella got like really pissed off, even though she's such a. She's like, you imprinted on my baby. I can just, I can literally hear her stupid actress voice. (laughs) It's you imprinted on my baby. Yeah, she's that raspy, stupid. I'm like, oh god, I can't take you serious. Um, anyway, but yeah, I think the way that he described it made it really less creepy in the movie because he was just like. Yes, I imprinted on her, but I just like I just want to protect her. It is not a sexual thing. Like it is not like it is not like that right now. <laughs> like I don't feel that way about a baby. I just want to make sure she's okay and well, safe. It's kind of cute protected. if you think about it. Like that's why he was always so drawn to Bella. But it's gonna turn around one day, yeah. and like her daughter's gonna be like, "So you you kissed my mom? That's cool." Yeah. It's a twist, but a twist. Another twist. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how I feel about it, but I would love to see like a funny book about like Charlie navigating being a grandfather to a vampire. Yeah. And again, he's dating a werewolf. And I would also love to see a Carlisle backstory. Ooh, I would love to see a Carlisle. How it turns into being a doctor to being good and to saving people. And how he learned I love to be Carlisle. around blood. He's the freaking best. Yeah, like I would love He's to see a Carlisle best. backstory. What about you? I mean, I kind of, I don't know. I think I would like to see, I don't, I mean, I, I, I say, I would say like, oh, a Jacob and Renesme love story. But honestly, <sighs> I feel like it'd be boring. Everything with Jacob does, it was just, I'm just kidding. I think it'd be cute as like a little piece, but I think I'd like to see um, Be- Bella really being a vampire. Like we haven't gotten much of her being a vampire and like nav- navigating that. And um, I don't know. Like, now like they the all live forever. Or, like the villain because the Volturi is already like okay with her. Yeah. I don't know. There'd have to be some new something new yeah. villain, a new journey. Or um, I'd like to see more of them navigating like parenthood and things like that. And now Renesmee is older. And how does that dynamic work with her growing up so fast, but still being their child? Mm -hmm. But now she's like an adult in like two seconds, you know, so they don't really get to be parents, but they are there. They are her parents. Like I would like to see that play out. How do Bella and Edward act as parents? Wait, can I say I have a question for you? This is my turn. I know you mm-hmm. ask the questions normally. Okay. If you were to say what is uh, one yeah. How dare song, you? one song that reminds you of Twilight, if you were to say right now, which which is the song? Well, of course, it's the uh, the the thousand uh, years every day. I yeah. love thousand you. Years yeah, thousand years. Like the thousand Curry. years. Yeah. Yes, I have to because the movie it's ingrained yeah. in my head. Every time I hear yeah. that movie or hear that song, I always do think of them laying in the grass together. Um, yeah. I think I would have to say... For a thousand years. Yeah. Supermassive Big Black Hole or Flightless years. Bird. For what? Um, what did you say? For if I was going to say like what song just screams Twilight to me is Supermassive Big Black Hole, which is the song in the bass. It's like... Bow, 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 that one. Um yeah, mm-hmm, that one's mm-hmm, the baseball scene, mm-hmm. or it's the flightless yeah, bird. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, flightless yep. bird by Iron. What was, is that in a scene? Or? That Iron something. I don't know, flightless bird, and it's the prom scene where she has a cast on her leg, and then she's like, oh. right now to bite me, and so he just kisses her neck. It's like, I was a quick da, da, diving to be the. That one. Yes, that one. yes, yes, that yes, one, yes. Oh my God, you're bringing back so many like core memories. Yeah. Okay, we are going to have a Twilight movie marathon the next yeah. time. We Wait, did you know Robert Pattinson was singing um, in the first movie, Let Me Sign? What? Yeah. The song, Let Me Sign. So that. when Bella gets bitten by James and he's like drawing yeah. the blood out of her, that song that's playing in the background is robert pattinson okay i guess i don't i can't wait for uh, you i gotta go watch it sweet like 
bittersweet. Oh my god. Let me sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called Let Me Sign by Robert Pattinson. Very good song. I didn't know yeah. that. That this is a that's a fun fact. fun fact. All right. Well, we do have to wrap this up because we've been going for actually quite a long time. Well, how long? And I'm surprised, oh but not really. It's almost been an hour. We said this was gonna be a quick little thirty minute episode. This is embarrassing. Whoops. There's just so much with Twilight. I guess I want to wrap it up by just saying that I I love Twilight. I will always have a special place in my heart for the Twilight series. Um, the movies were hit or miss, but I'm happy we have them. I wouldn't. I mean, I would. I don't ever I want them say, to okay. be remade. Ever. Don't remake them. <gasps> no. 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 <laughs> No, don't I don't them. know. I don't know. I I don't. I they I, don't need to be. They're cult classics. Just leave them. Let them sit on the shelf. Mm. Let a new series like Throne of Glass be made into some books or movies. Movies, yeah. movies, movies. I like series or movies. Yeah. see. Here's the thing. I don't think Harry Potter could ever be remade. But I hate the fact that they're remaking it. Hate the fact they're remaking you did it. it. Here. Hulu is remaking the entire thing as a TV series. I'm done. Like, there are so many other characters and storylines you could be remaking into a TV series with the Harry Potter universe, and you're choosing to remake all the original books, which we've already seen. Like, good luck ever casting someone who can be Snape, the way Alan Rickman was Snape. Or Hagrid? Yeah, you can never. You can't um, touch it. No. Also, don't even talk to the Golden Trio. You will never find a better Hermione, Harry, or Ron. No. Nope. Don't even try to touch no. it. No. No. Oh. Or Malfoy no. or anybody. Literally. Literally everyone was perfect. Everyone was. Why would they do that? What a waste. It's a waste. Take that money and spend it on the damn Akatar series so it's perfect. Seriously. Like, make that one better. Because they're already, I heard they're taking money away from it already. So I'm scared. Same. All right. We really do have to wrap this up. I love Twilight. I love you. What do you guys think about Twilight? Did this bring up any memories are for you? Are you team Edward or Was are you this... team Jacob? Yes. Were you team movies or team books? What do you like? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite book? Answer the questions that we did below. We want to hear from you. Um, and if you want us to, do you want a, more Twilight content? Please let so us I know. Feel like we we can do the surface. Yeah, I feel like there's so much more we could do here. We could definitely like do rereads or rewatches of the movies and kind of do deep dives on them and everything like that. So that would be cool. Okay. But if you want that, please let us know. Because if you don't let us know, then we don't know what to do for you. So we'll just make it up as we go <laughs> along. All right. Well. All right. Well, have a wonderful night. I love you, Val. I love you too. I'll see. We'll see. You see on Wednesday. We will see you guys next week. See you Wednesday. Whimsy Wednesdays. Bye. Bye.